Now that you know the syntax for declaring variables in Scala, it's worth taking a minute to talk about what your mental model should be. So when we typed in the statement val a equals five, okay, what image should you have in your head? Similarly, what about the var b equals six and the b equals seven? Just an interesting thing to note here, the spaces around this equal sign are not required. They're nice for reading things, but when I switch from the letter to the symbol uh, here, Scala can figure out that those are two separate tokens. The space between the vowel and the A is required because those are all letters and otherwise it thinks that you're just meaning that you have something called vala uh, or varb. It doesn't know that the first three letters should be an independent token. We're going to put spaces between them in part because there are times, for example, if this had been a negative five, it does matter. And so it's good to get in the habit. It's also easier to read. But what's our mental model for these declarations? Well, when we declared that A, what you should think of is that we have a little box. And our little box happens to be named A. We'll put that label up here above the box. And this box points to another box that is the actual object. And that object is storing the value 5. Okay. So A is the name we give to, and we call this a reference, and that reference references an object. In this case, that object has the value of 5 in it. Okay. What about when we declare B? Well, basically it's the same thing. Of course, now it's named B and not A. And we started off where there was an object with the value 6, and B references that object 6. So, something like that. Which makes the interesting question, what happens when we did the next line, where we set B equal to 7? And it's tempting to think that that did this, but that would be wrong. Okay, That's not the image that you should have in your head for how assigning to a var works in Scala. Turns out the val versus var difference is all about this arrow and whether you can change the reference. So when we set b to be 7, what really happened was we got a new box with the value 7. And then we caused b to point to this new box. There might still be an object 6 out here. If anyone's using it, it'll stay there. If no one's using it, it can be taken away and garbage collected. But we did not change this object here, and that is because this object is immutable. This is a concept that we'll talk about more later. All of the types that we've talked about so far are immutable, which means that once I make a box that has that value in it, whether it's an int, a double, a string, a care, a tuple, whatever it is, all the types we've talked about so far, once I make that box, it can't change. Okay. The only thing that we can change at this point is if we declared a var, we can change where the arrow points by doing an assignment to it. So that's the mental image that you should have inside of your head when you think about declaring variables in the Scala language. It will become significant to us later on in how we interpret different things that happen.